Good morning, world renowned family. I wanted to send a video or record a video specifically for us, uh, and it is uh, over something that many of you are having an issue with or are experiencing right now, and it all has to do with time the idea of time and the application of time when it comes to our real estate contracts. Now, one, what I'm going to do instead of you guys just seeing me, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you uh, and I want us to immediately go into the state contract this is the as is contract and you'll see here that I already have the section for time um, brought up here and one of the things that is in bold is time is of the essence in this contract I've said it hundreds if not thousands of times that we are now in a time period when business happens in the speed of seconds now whether you're on the buyer side of the transaction or if you're working with the seller it is very important for you all to understand one thing that time is of the essence never before has it been more important to be aware and on top of uh, the time periods, on the deadlines than right now, especially when we're in such a litigious society, when people are looking to sue or litigate if you miss a time period. And then you're putting your client, either buyer or seller, at risk. Now, something that I want uh, us to, while I'm talking about time, and, and the as is, talks about calendar days, uh, the crisps the crsp talks about business days understand that and then once again know which contract you should be using depending on the best uh, if we're operating as single agents what's best for your clients very very important there understand that there is a shall extend to 5 p.m if it falls on saturday sunday or legal holidays of the next business day understand that 5 p.m if that if that comes into effect is very important for timelines and the the issue that well the I, I guess the example when most of us are running into issues are going to be a few one of them is going to be first the loan approval deadline we're putting in our contracts that loan approval is going to be on and excuse me for moving so quickly through the contract but I do want us to be here that they are going to apply for a loan uh, within five days if your buyer has not applied for a loan in five days buyer is in default on that section of the loan application when we start talking about loan approvals if we don't have a loan approval within whatever time period goes in here your buyer has messed up all right, it's very important that you're on top of these timelines. That's why if you're do handling the transaction yourself or if you have a transaction manager such as Joanna with Sure to Close, that's why we're usually sending out notices to the parties 48 hours in advance. Hey, we're 48 hours away from our deadline and we don't have a loan approval. Do get extension for the loan approval time period yes or no if we're not now now here's something i want us to understand so i'm going to talk about loan approval loan application uh, appraisal uh, deadlines appraisal contingencies and then also a big one is inspection deadlines what i want us to understand let me go back down now once again avert your eyes if you get sick you see here in section 12 and all of this is bold for a reason because the People who drafted the contract, they understand how important deadlines and this section, uh, right to cancel, property inspection right to cancel, how important it is to everyone. If you see something in bold, read it. I cannot stress the importance of reading what's in bold enough. And since this entire uh, section is in bold, it's important for you to read. Now, here, you will see that it says, Buyer shall have a blank days after effective date within which to have such inspection of the property performed as buyer shall desire during the inspection period. Here's the part I want you to really understand, except drill this in to yourself 
and to the buyer, if the buyer is your client, or to the buyer's agent on the other side of the transaction. If buyer determines in buyer's sole discretion that the property is not acceptable to buyer, buyer may terminate this contract by delivering written notice of such election to seller prior to expiration of inspection period. If buyer timely terminates this contract, the deposit shall be returned to buyer. Now, the big thing is written notice and prior to expiration of inspection period. Now, let's say that you have a seven day inspection period. On the seventh day, you decide to send over a terms and asking for a price reduction. If the seller has not gotten back to you, the safest thing to do, if it's a deal breaker and a big amount, the safest thing to do is to either, I'll tell you the first one. If you see that you're not going to get it done in time, send over an extension for the inspection period. That's number one. But understand, when you send over an extension for an uh, inspection period, and if it is not executed by the other side prior to, prior to the expiration of the inspection period, then your, your right to counsel based on inspection disappears. So that's why I'm thinking 48, 72 to 48 hours prior to, if you don't have, if you haven't come to agreements, get that extension request for inspection period out to the other side of the transaction. If it does not come back prior to the expiration of the inspection deadline, send over the notice of cancellation. Terminate the contract. If there's going to be a big deal, big discrepancy between the contract price and any concessions or reductions that you're asking for, because if you're still negotiating, let's say if we've had seven days, if you're still negotiating on the eighth day and negotiations fall apart, you cannot cancel. You cannot terminate based on inspection uh, period, inspection findings, and get the escrow back. This is not open for interpretation. It is according to the letter of the contract that is right there in the address contract. Very, very important. So while the other side, the other party of the transaction might say, well, let's continue this real close, we'll figure it out. They have no legal obligation to do anything other than what the contract says. So be very careful, be mindful of that. Uh, and it might be uncomfortable, but that's a conversation that you probably should have with your client, if it's buyer or seller, that if it's on the buyer side of the transaction, Maybe it is in their best interest. I know they've already paid for the home inspection. I know that they may have even paid for the appraisal, depending on the time period or how long your uh, inspection period is. If you cannot get a, an extension, and if there's any or a significant amount of escrow at risk, you might want to send over that cancellation and then negotiate the terms uh, and then go back under contract. Now, there are a lot of additional uh, factors that you all need to consider before making that decision, but not knowing and not communicating with your buyer or the other agent and then putting their escrow at risk is unacceptable, especially when it's our job to know these contracts. So that's what I wanted this video to be about. I wanted to share that with you really quickly. Hopefully you all find this useful. And until next time, don't be average, be world renowned. I love you. Peace.